Firebase and Expo. One tech stack to rule them all and in the code, bind them. Now that's just my opinion and let's be honest, I'm probably a 1x developer at best. We'll be covering Firebase Authentication, Firebase Firestore, Firebase Functions, Firebase Storage. Basically, a lot of Firebase and a little Expo. You can start by going into the description, go to GitHub, clone the repo and call the day. This is what a 10x developer would do, which we are not. So we'll start by setting up the app. In your terminal, run Create Expo App. The app will be named Firebase Expo Video and we are using the Templates tab. We're going to CD into the app with CD Firebase Expo Video and open up your code editor. Then open up a terminal and run npx run iOS to open up a iOS simulator to begin your app journey. This will take a few minutes to a few hours depending on your computer. Now for Firebase setup, go to firebase.com, go to console. We are going to add a project, label it whatever you want, click continue, and there shall be no analytics today. Create project and hit continue. We're going to create a web app, name it whatever you want, register the app. Now we are going to copy and paste the config. Now go back to our app and create a file called firebaseconfig.ts in the root directory. We will also open up a new terminal and run npm install Firebase. Initial setup completed. Now on to authentication. First we'll enable authentication. Go to build authentication, click get started, email password, and enable. Boom, easy buddy. Back to the code base, we will update the Firebase config.ts. We are going to import initialize auth from the Firebase auth library, and we'll initialize authentication with our Firebase app and export it. Now there's a few extra steps to add auth persistence so the user doesn't need to log in after the app restarts. First, npm install react native async storage, import it, and add get react native persistence to Firebase auth, and then initialize auth, We'll now take another parameter, boom. Then we'll initialize a metro config and then modify it. Then go to tsconfig.json and add this to your paths. This is a TypeScript issue, not sure why, but this fixes it. Now let's delete these files to the shadow realm. Let's create a index.tsx. Now inside app underscore layout.tsx, add the index screen that we just created. Now restart the app on the simulation and we will be able to route to the index file we just created. Back at index.tsx, let's create a safe area view so all the children are in the safe area. We will be importing the auth from firebaseconfig.ts and and sign in with email and password from Firebase Auth. We will have two state hooks for email and password. We will have two main functions, sign in and sign up. Now for sign in, we'll call sign in with email and password. We will also add error handling. And for sign up, we will copy everything and change the function to create user with email and password. If the user signs in or signs up, we will route the user to the tab screen. Now let's add a title, two text inputs, and then two buttons calling our sign in and sign up functions. Okay, now we have our login and everything is working but we want to be able to sign out of the app. So we're going to the first tab, index.tsx, and adding a sign out button so the user can sign out. And we wanna set up a listener for changes in the user authentication. This takes a callback function where the user object will be null if the user is not signed in, therefore routing them back to the login page. Boom, authentication completed. Okay, so everything is good, but does it actually look good? And we want our app to look on fleek. So we are going to use something called Coding Magic, AKA ChatGPT GitHub Copilot in tandem with our other favorite tool, Copy and Paste to make everything look pretty. Wow. Now let's set up all the tabs. At 2.tsx, remove this view and edit screen. Let's change this to database. Let's remove these extra imports and make this a safe area view. Now let's copy and paste this component two times. This tab will be three and change the title to storage. This tab will now be four and change the title to functions. Now let's go to index.tsx in the tabs folder and add the two tabs we just created. Naming tabs is like naming kids. You can name them whatever you want, but it's frowned upon if you name them Zeus. Okay, so first we will enable Firestore and Firebase, click build, then Firestore database, click create database, hit next, hit create, and then hit the like button. Now go to the rules and add if request.auth does not equal null, hit publish. In Firebase config, we'll initialize our DB and we will have to restart our app. Now go to tab two, which we will use to make a to-do list using CRUD operations. We are going to be using these imports in this component, copy and paste to save time, hashtag 10x YouTube watcher. The task will be a single to-do. The to-dos is an array of all the single to-dos. Often user is used to give the user access to only their to-dos. And the to-dos collection is the collection
collection with all the to-dos data stored in Firebase Firestore. Now we're going to have four main functions. Fetch to-dos will grab all the to-dos for the user and will be called after every change in to-dos to get the latest updates. Add to-dos is used to create the to-do in Firebase. We'll also append the user ID to identify the owner of the to-do. Update to-do is used to complete or undo the to-do and delete to-do is used to delete the to-do from Firebase. A lot of to-dos. We will also add a use effect and then trigger fetch to-dos every time the user is updated. Now we will add a text input to add tasks, a button, and a flat list with more buttons to flesh out the functionality. And of course, for styling, we have our senior dev ChatGPT and a few more view components for maximum aesthetics. And now we have a functioning to-do list that no one will ever use. And I wonder why we perpetuate coding useless things and I start contemplating my life choices. And then I realize nothing matters. We are going to enable storage, go to build storage and get started, click next and done. Now go to rules and add if request .auth does not equal null, hit publish. In Firebase config, we will initialize our storage and export it and restart the app. Now npm install expo image picker to grab images to upload. Then we will run npx expo run iOS to restart our simulator. These are the imports for our storage screen. We will have three state hooks, image, images, and user. We will have four main functions. Fetch images will retrieve all the images associated with the user. Pick images will use expo image picker to select an image from the user's phone. Upload image will upload the image to storage and update the image's state hook and delete image to delete the image. So we will add a button to pick the image. Then if there is a user selected image, we will render that image as well as a button to upload it to storage. Next, we will render a flat list of all the images in the images state hook. Of course, we will add styling from our buddy ChatGPT and Abracadabra Alkazam. We have our image uploading. Now you can upload pics to the internet where only Google employees can see. Also, I forgot to add this piece of code, which is okay because we all make mistakes. At least that's why I tell myself. It gets the user ID and pulls any associated images. And we can go to Firebase Storage to check if the image has been uploaded. And we can also check if the image has been deleted. But let's be honest with ourselves and realize it's probably on the internet forever. First, we will npm install these commands. Log into your Firebase using Firebase login, then use Firebase init, arrow key down to Firebase functions and press space to select it. Enter, use an existing project, scroll down to the project you are using, hit enter. We will use TypeScript, yes for ESLint and install dependencies now. We now have a functions folder to deploy Firebase functions to create microservices. Go to functions, src, index.ts. We will replace this hello world on request function with a callable function. Now deployment, use Firebase deploy only functions. This will take a few minutes. If you don't have a blaze plan, AKA a pay plan, you will get this error. Now go to Firebase console, click upgrade, add a payment and upgrade to the blaze plan. You can set a limit of $1 if you're worried about getting charged, but this shouldn't be a problem with this application run Firebase deploy again. Now at tab four, we will update our imports, create a function result state hook, create a function to call our hello world function we deployed. We will then add some text and a button to call our function. And as always some beautiful styling. If you get the Firebase error unauthenticated, then rerun MPX expo run iOS and voila, we have a over-engineered hello world. But now we can tell our interviewer we have experience building scalable microservices for cross-platform mobile apps. As they say, perception is reality. You can now create your own full featured cross-platform mobile app have the potential to print money from ad revenue and microtransactions, then you can become a digital nomad, move to Bali to save money, and never see your friends and family again.